my whole life. You're too sensitive, things seem to affect you more, and I felt that way. Like things seem to affect me more than other people. Uh, I have big emotions, and I try really hard to keep myself small and not let that out too often. Before I ever started doing anything really creative with paint, I read a book by Glennon Doyle. And in that book, she had this passage. Because yes, I've got these conditions, anxiety, depression, and addiction, and they almost killed me. But they are also my superpowers. I'm the canary in the mine, and you need my sensitivity because I can smell toxins in the air that you can't smell. See trouble you don't see, and sense danger you don't feel. My sensitivity could save us all. And so instead of letting me fall silent and die, why don't we work together to clear some of this poison from the air? What this passage did was not only like give me a mirror to look into and see that there are other people like me, it gave me permission to be that person. So when I started painting and really getting into this technique and using my breath and using all of me to put these big emotions that I'd always been told were too much onto canvas and then show people, that's the passage I went back to. The fact that every time I tried to put something between my breath and the canvas, it seemed to make it harder. There wasn't as much direction or there was too much direction or it just made it it was too strong or it was too soft. So what I've had to do is learn how to use my own breath to manipulate the paint forwards, backwards, sideways. Um, there just can't be anything in between. And I think that's a lot like my relationship with God. Even the art, <laughs> anything that I start putting ahead of God in my life, does the same thing to me that happened to that paint. It makes me too fast or too slow, or I fall off the edge. And I think he's using this technique to teach me a whole bunch of different things, but I think that's the primary one is that he's first. I was a single mom at one time with two amazing children and um, this painting, it was a black and white and it's black in the middle with this beautiful um, just flow off of it and what it represented to me was the darkness that I felt going through a divorce with these two precious children and the fact that that was darkness but all this light came out of it and we are so blessed after that and then to see a piece of art that just made me realize how far my children and I had come was beautiful. The doors that open are fantastic. The doors that close no longer really crush me. I mean, it's sad to get a no, and I get them all the time. But there's something kind of fun about becoming used to the no where it doesn't completely take me down anymore. Now it's just a no, all right, maybe that wasn't for me anyway. It, it's not, maybe it's not personal. Maybe it has nothing to do with me. Maybe I'm not what they're looking for. Maybe my art isn't what they're looking for. Maybe abstract isn't their thing. And to be able to have that shift in my brain has been amazing. It's. <laughs> it's helped with my outlook on every other aspect of my life. If my family wasn't supportive and encouraging do it, of, of doing this, this wouldn't exist. This has to exist within the confines of what is really most important to me, my faith and my family. If it, if it somehow veers outside of that, it, we're not doing it anymore. If it isn't serving those two things, we're done, we're finished. It doesn't, I know what having 
family support and friends and the importance of that is uh, in my life. I know what, how important my relationship with Jesus is in my life. And if it impacts those two things in any negative way, we're done. There's no more. There is no point in doing any of this if it doesn't serve those two things. And right now it does.